show with Danny Soleil. I'm your host, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for tuning in on this Sunday, wherever you're coming in from, wherever uh, you're watching YouTube live. Thank you so much for spending this time and joining me. Uh, thank you so much if you are uh, a grandparent or if you're a parent, if you're a child, whoever, whatever age you are, um, uh, whatever race, religion, creed, all that good stuff, whatever, I thank you. Appreciate you joining me. Let's get into the show. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, a little bit about the show is what we do is we go ahead, well, I go ahead, and I review two beers. While I'm reviewing those two beers, I talk about the videos that came out on my channel last week, and I preview a little bit about the video that's going to be coming up this week. So lots of fun, lots of recap going on in between, some things that happen around the world, in the news, in the United States, things that just come up, things that pop into my brain that I want to talk about. I bring it to you here. I'm going to introduce a new segment called This Day in History. All right. Sounds like a pretty fun thing. It's pretty basic. It's pretty self-explanatory. And we wrap up the show with a little bit of what are you reading? What are you watching? Please, whatever you're reading, whatever you're watching, just put it down in the comments below. You can put it down in there now or you can put it down there later when we do it. And then we close it out with one final quote. I say thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And hasta la vista. We'll talk to you later. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the show. So, now, without further ado, if you're catching me for the first time or if you watch me all the time, uh, please go ahead and share my info. Go and grab one of my videos. Grab one of my segments. Grab anything of mine and just go ahead and share it on my, uh, or share it on your, uh, uh, your socials. That would be a big help to me as I continue to grow and my channel gets bigger. Um, I'm building something here and I couldn't do it without my community, which is you. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So if you wouldn't mind that call to action, I dare you to go ahead and grab one of the clips off my Facebook, YouTube, wherever, Instagram, and just go ahead and share it on your social. Now let's start the show. <clears throat> Today is another one of those inspirational shows. One of those shows that, well, we thought about something that happened in the event of uh, just life being life. And we said, you know what, let's go ahead and celebrate, let's commemorate that certain thing. Um, I know two weeks ago we did the weekly beer and video review show and we celebrated the Koreans and the Korean movie celebration of the Oscar winning film Parasite. So we tried Korean beers. Well, this one is kind of the similar kind of makeup. Basically, what had happened is, unfortunately, we lost um, the founder of Trader Joe's. That's right. Uh, the founder of Trader Joe's has passed away at 89 years old. Um, I saw that he passed away two years ago. If you're not familiar with Trader Joe's and you're watching this from overseas, he is, um, well, Trader Joe's has long been a, a grocery store here in Los Angeles and now it's branching out and we even have one in our hometown, my hometown of Buffalo, New York. Really cool place. Um, I think it was kind of like a like a hipster, kind of cool, like a vibe, almost like a, you know, vegan LA style when it first came out. The first was open in Pasadena and I've been to that original one. It's a lot of fun. It's just kind of cool to go into these original places. And now there's probably, if I had a guess, alone in California, shoot, man, at least 50 grocery stores. So Trader Joe's, and in honor of the, um, the owner, the creator, and the founder of Trader Joe's, uh, we're going to go celebrate, and we are going to try. The first beer will be... <laughs> this one's great. All right, you ready? Trader Jose. That's right. Trader Jose. All right, I think it's a knockoff of Corona. It is sold at Trader Joe's. It is imported from Mexico right there on the label. Um, it is... A 5% alcohol so not a huge strong beer but um, I like it for a lot of reasons I like it because it's a spin off of Corona but it uses the name of Trader Joe's and calls it Trader Jose which is kind of cool they even use this um, this is like clear bottle which is kind of neat and um, well, I've, I've actually just found out about this one I didn't know too much about it and, and I was in Trader Joe's about uh, two weeks ago buying some almonds and cashews and things like that and uh, well I went ahead and purchased and or I saw this so I had to go ahead and celebrate 
um, and commemorate the founder of Trader Joe's uh, for you know great accomplishments in the American marketplace and was able to create these um, supermarkets that everybody loves. And I gotta be honest with you, I just started kind of going there and the things that I purchased there, the, the foods and stuff like that, it's um it, it's pretty legitimate hype. You know, the, the food there is, is pretty good. They make all their own brands from everything from like egg rolls to uh, to nuts and uh, well no they back up their own nuts and muffins and breads and and all kinds of really good stuff but um yeah quality food and uh, we're gonna go ahead and drink this Trader Jose in honor so got the red bottle opener here we're gonna go ahead and pop open this bottle oh all right it's got a little bit of a uh, nice smell to it okay coming open as we open it, yeah, usually we're getting a nice strong waft when we drink the IPAs, but uh, this one actually has got a really pungent uh, beer smell to it. And let's go ahead and try out this premium beer, Trader Jose. All right. All right, all right, not bad. All right, not bad at all. Ooh. Trader Jose. Nice. Okay. So those of you that don't know, uh, Corona is a pretty popular beer and, and, and this Trader Jose seems to be emulating it. Um, I don't really love Corona. I like it, uh, but it's really good. And uh, the first sip of Trader Jose is right on par with the delicious Corona. So um, yeah, not bad. It's got that sweet Pilsner taste to it. Um, Nothing too overpowering, nothing too strong, just right, just a nice, good beer. I feel like I could uh, put down about a 12-pack of these before I go out. and uh, Or where you're playing volleyball on a Sunday afternoon and you just want to, you know, keep cranking them down. This is, this is not a bad choice. And the really good thing is, these suckers are only $5.99 a six-pack. So it's $1 a beer, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. Really good taste. Initial offering of beer. Tasty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not bad. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and enjoy that. But now let's get into a couple of things that I want to talk about this week. And um, <clears throat> well, I don't know if we mentioned it last week. Uh, somehow the producing part of this segment of the show kind of got a little um, messed up. But I don't know. I got my first paycheck from YouTube. <laughs> All right, that was pretty exciting. That was really fun. I know people do videos of it. Um, they do all kinds of fun stuff with their paycheck. Uh, mine probably wasn't as big as that. Uh, it was It was very, uh, you know, it's weird. It's like, it's not a lot, but it's more than I had when I ever started. So I'm very humbled by it. And it's a start. And that's, what, that's what's important. That's what's the most important thing. And a lot of people ask me this all the time. Like, uh, are you rich off of YouTube? Do you make like so much money off of YouTube? And like, how does it work? How, you know, and... You know, to be honest with you, no, I'm not. I'm not rich with uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm, I'm just growing my channel. I've been doing this about a year and now five months. And um, I, I got my first paycheck a year and four months into it. And it wasn't like you could go and break the bank with it, but it's able to sustain me. And it's able to pay for maybe a hotel as I travel. And then I can go ahead and pay for it. So that right there is putting it back in the business and it's really cool and it's really fun for me so maybe I'll be able to continue to just keep growing on this and uh, build up the check and there's lots of different ways um, the way that when people kind of say how oh, I got paid by YouTube they're talking about YouTube AdSense okay and YouTube AdSense is probably the least uh, lucrative time and, and, and way to make money on YouTube there's so many different ways there's so many creative things that you can do on YouTube to, to get money. Um, and well, just for example, like I have merchandise. So if you haven't seen any of my merchandise and you're interested in it, I'll be sure to go ahead and throw it down in the description below. You can click on that link and it'll take you to a store which where I sell Travel Man Dan merchandise. That's one way to do it. Another way you can do it is uh, Patreon. Another way you can do it is called Super Chat, where the community can go ahead and they can support their favorite YouTuber or entertainer and stuff like that, and they can throw them a little coin. And people are like, what do you mean throw them a little coin? That's just it. You can just, you know, people want to see you succeed if they enjoy watching you. And so that's what building this community, that's what building your channel is all about. 
over time, over, over um, consistency in videos and just continuing to build and get better and better, people will go ahead and they'll support you. They want you to win. They want you to succeed. So there's lots of different ways, but, um, but I'm definitely in the game. I'm here to play. Uh, I'm, not, I'm here to stay, and I'm not going anywhere, so I'm pretty pumped about that. I got my first YouTube chap. I will keep it to myself only because, well, it may not seem like a lot to you, and it may not seem like a lot to me, and it may seem like a lot. Um, I'm going to keep it to myself just because monetary value is well, so hard to, to measure. Because perspective, someone that has nothing and then sees this YouTube check, that could be everything, right? That could flip everything around and change their world no matter, you know, we're talking globally here. And then some people could be like, that check's nothing, you know, that's what I eat for lunch, you know. So, you know, just to keep it humble and keep it uh, in perspective, it's my business and I, I don't share it purposely because you never know what people's situation is. But... um and, and I don't want to ever mock anybody or rub it in their face or this kind of thing. So we're just going to keep that to ourselves. But we will drink some Trader Jose. Let's go back for a second sip. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. It's refreshing. All right. It tastes like your, like a weedy beer, right? It's almost like the the backwash taste that I'm tasting almost tastes like cereal, you know. Um, it's enjoyable. It's crisp. It's fresh. Um, it is refreshing, as I've said. And uh, yeah, just really nice beer. And one thing I like about the clear bottle is, well, you can really see how much you've drank. And it's, it, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like a, like a beaker in a, in a science experiment or something you see how much fluid ounces are in your uh, your tube there <laughs> so uh yeah not bad enjoying the trader jose's so the next thing i want to talk about is a couple of places that i got a chance to eat at here in los angeles now i didn't do a food friday video because i was there for uh some functions that i wasn't able to bring camera and stuff but i still was um I was rewarded with an excellent meal, excellent company, and um, yeah, it was just fantastic. I had first place I want to talk about is called Taxe, and it was a French place in uh, Silver Lake. I don't know. I've always drove by this place. Uh, if you know LA, it's like right as you're leaving Silver Lake on Sunset Boulevard and you're starting to make that turn to go into Echo Park on your left-hand side coming from Hollywood, you can see like this crazy like old school style building with the carport and stuff and it's called Taxe. I think I'm saying that right. T-A-X-I-X. -X. It's a French restaurant and um, yeah, it was great, man. I wanted to go in there and try French onion soup and some cheeses and it was delicious. The only thing that was not... <laughs> Excuse me, French people, don't don't come at me. Uh, you might agree with me. I don't know. Was um, was pate? Pate is. Uh, I found something that uh, travel man Dan Danny Soleil is, uh, is is doesn't really like. I'm not really a big fan of pate, which is weird because I love w liverwurst. My father used to make liverwurst sandwiches for us as a kid, and it was like yellow cheese and liverwurst, and uh, yeah, it was good stuff. But uh, the pate. Uh, I'm gonna pass next time. It really, I really couldn't go in for a second bite. There's just something about. It's not so much the texture, but the taste was was just not that good. But the rest of the restaurant was fantastic. Had some great different cheeses off of sampler. Had some great different like meats uh, that I tried off of sampler plate. Excuse me. And um, yeah, overall it was great. Now the second restaurant I went to was in Pasadena, and it is a most famous upper echelon high i don't know what you call it and I, you know i always think chain i think fast food or you know run of the mill but they do have a lot of different um locations and restaurants and that's ruth chris and if you've ever eaten there you know what i'm talking about it's, it's a steakhouse it's freaking phenomenal i went to the one on, on colorado and pasadena and i got the cowboy which is like a 22 ounce steak and i always like uh it, when it's got blue cheese on it or whatever but fantastic amazing meal um if you don't know anything about like steak houses like traditional like houses are usually um the way that you order is a la carte so you order the steak and then you order the side and then um and, and usually the sides are like really 
probably just as much as like a steak set would be at Outback. Like you go to Outback or, or Texas Roadhouse or whatever, and I'm not I'm not a dog in those places because I freaking absolutely love uh, all of them. Um, but at Roos Chris House, which is a traditional steakhouse, you know you're gonna pay like sixty seventy dollars just for the steak, and then like twenty dollars for a baked potato. Crazy man. But um, awesome food, great company. Slammed down a couple of magnums of Silver Oak, which is a uh, 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 red wine, delicious, and uh, just being around good company. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to share that with people, so I wasn't able to do like a Food Friday video, but uh, maybe maybe it's something that I can do later. Maybe I can go ahead and go into Ruth Chris and give you guys a, a peek at it. And if you haven't seen any of my Food Friday videos, I'll go ahead and, uh, well, you can go ahead and check it out on my channel or I'll go ahead and throw it up there right now. You can check those out. Awesome places, delicious food, and uh, well, had a great time. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, well, unfortunately, we're going through a little bit of a scary time, especially over in Asia and in China, is the coronavirus. Unfortunately, we did have somebody pass away here in the United States. So um, this is my public service warning, whatever. You know, don't mock it. Uh, take precautions. Do what you got to do. Listen to, to officials. Don't get freaked out and scared like, you know, crazy. But, you know germs and things like that you just never know right so just take precautions because uh we don't certainly want anything to happen to you personally and we don't want anything to spread throughout our country so uh, unfortunately someone did pass in here in the united states and it's getting pretty serious compared to where it was uh, say a month ago or two months ago but uh, hopefully we'll be able to find the cure for this uh, deadly virus and we'll be able to move on from it uh, you know, we're really sharp and smart human beings, you know, the, the you're unbelievable long and I feel very confident that this will be resolved uh, Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, you know, or you know I, I don't know too much about how these types of things are, are cared for and you know what the plan is for it But you know, God bless everyone whoever got sick from it and uh, you know, let's just hope that we can find a cure for it All right, let's go back into the Trader Jose so the Trader Jose. <laughs> All right, so let's try it out here. How are we doing here? It's really weird. I don't, I don't know what it is with this beer, but if it's the white bottle, if it's the Corona, something about it. I've heard rumors about the green bottle and the lights coming through it, refracting, uh, change the taste of it. But it definitely has that little bit of skunkiness to it. Just a little bit, but it definitely has it. It's got like a skunky taste. Not like a hoppy skunk, but like just an unusual different like skunk skunk taste. And it's weird because Corona had that too. You know, a lot of people think like that the Corona lime, when you put the lime in, is, uh, is actually for, well, the taste and stuff like that. And there's a lot of things being thrown out there, a lot of different myths and things like that. But the reason that they have the lime in the Corona bottle. And this is, I, I don't know how document this is, but I've read this and, and, and it, you know, it seems to make sense. So sure, why not? And basically what it was, was the people that were traveling by boat back like in the early 1800s and whatnot, um, and they were importing and, and, and they had beer on their ship. They would, they would have it in the bottle and, and the cap would be iron, right? So the salty water that splashed on it or whatever, somehow, some way that the, over time, the iron, or the, the uh, yeah, the iron cap would leave little tiny specks of rust around the rim of the bottle. Now, when you went and drank, uh, you don't want to get, like, rust all over it. So what the sailors would do is they would use, because they always had it on board because of scurvy, right? Scurvy was a, a popular disease that a lot of people, you know, at, on sea got because they didn't have, we got a little fly in here, huh? They didn't have, um... Uh, proper amounts of vitamin C so they carried limes and lemons and stuff on the boat well, what they would do is they would just kind of ring it around <laughs> oh thank you HW I appreciate that um yeah the, well I appreciate that very much so what they would do is uh they would go ahead and they would uh, use the lemon or lime around the rim of the glass bottle which would take those rust barnacles off and therefore be able to drink it now how much truth that is 
I don't know. Well, at least, you know, if you know, please put it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your analysis of why they actually put the lime or the lemon inside the Corona bottle. Um, pretty interesting stuff. And uh, well, right here at the studio here for the Danny Soleil Weekly Beer and Video Show, we are drinking Trader Jose. It is a premium beer to honor Trader Joe's owner. Ah, that's good. That's really good. All right. All right. So, guys, how was uh, how was your leap year? Anybody doing anything exciting? Did you have fun? You know, it only happens once every four years. Yesterday was that day. Pretty cool. Pretty exciting. Got an extra day. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you did on your leap year. I'd like to hear what, I'd like to hear what you did. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is... Well, a lot of people see me out here on YouTube and, and, you know, they they think I'm a YouTuber and I am a YouTuber, I guess, you know, but, but actually my profession is also an actor and uh, lucky enough to recently uh, be a part of the DG, DJI uh, uh, drone company. I don't know if you guys are familiar with DJI. I would love to get sponsored by them. I love their equipment, but this was really cool because I was able to... Uh, be the actor in their new commercial for the P4 multi-spectral drone and what that means is, is like it's basically their heavy-duty farming drone and it's this really cool drone that like farmers can use which I played all right farmer weather it, it, it kind of scans the crops and it tells you a little bit about uh, you know how the crops are doing in certain areas and well farmer can use it because they can read it through uh, using this drone, they can use this technology and they can kind of see their crops without having to drive over it and they can get a bird's eye view of how things are looking. Really inventive, really cool, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. And I'll go ahead and definitely gives you a little burpees. I'll go ahead and put it down in the description below, the link. So if you want to click on that, you can see me in action as an actor. Um, that was my most, I guess, my most recent work. Um, pretty fun, pretty good commercial. Really great crew, had fun working with them. Um, really nice people. Uh, that's what I really enjoy with, uh, you know. But as I look at it, man, I'm like, damn, dude, I, I would love to play. Like, like I love the movie Interstellar. It's probably one of my top three favorite movies. Um, I just would love to play a farmer in a, in a real role one day. So I'm going to keep working as an actor. I'm going to keep hustling, and hopefully I'll get casted as it. If you want to go ahead and see me, you can check out that video of me with DJI and uh, the drone. That's pretty fun. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and finish off the Trader Jose. And <laughs> this is, I, uh, I misjudged the bottle. I left a little. This is like where it just sits there at the table when someone walks away. But we're going to finish this last wig. I'm going to give it a score. And then we're going to move on to the, the next beer. <sighs> Delicious. All right. Really tasty, good stuff. You know what you're getting with this guy. It's a cheaper but a higher, cheaper beer, if that makes any sense. Um, I, I definitely taste like uh, some kind of like bitterness or lemoniness. Um, kind of like a, it's, that's what's kind of like a skunky lemon taste. Uh, really tasty. It's imported from Mexico. It's a spinoff of Corona. Trader Jose's a, a play on Trader Joe's. You can buy it, it's delicious. I suggest you get a 12-pack if you want to go out to a hot summer pool party or something like that. Really good stuff. I'm going to give it a solid 7.5%. All right? Not bad. Not a bad score at all. Would I drink it again? Hell yeah. Am I going to tell people about it? Absolutely. Good stuff. You can get it at your local Trader Joe's, Trader Jose's. Bring to the next party and have a little conversation about it. Tell them you saw it on Travel Man Day and the Weekly Beer and Video Review. All right. And that's what's going to come up next is I'm going to drop a, I'm going to drop a little knowledge. I'm going to drop a little bomber on you guys. I'm going to drop something on you. But let's go ahead and try out the next beer, keeping with the theme. Okay, the next beer is, uh, okay, that one was more of a lighter beer. We are going to go with another Trader Jose's, the dark version. <laughs> All right, okay, so Trader Jose's dark comes in a brown bottle. Initially different, uh, it's 5.3 alcohol percent. It is also imported from Mexico. You can get it at Trader Joe's. And um, well, let's go ahead and give it a try. The Trader, the Trader Jose's, the regular one was pretty good. They also make a light version. Ooh, 
All right, so first a smell, first aroma, whiff, a sniff, snort, whatever you want to call it, is a bit of a chocolatey kind of juicy kind of grapey smell, okay? All right. All right, let's go ahead and give the dark a nice swig. I like a lot of IPAs. If you have tried this one or if you tried the other one, put it down in the comments below. Or if you have an idea, a suggestion of what kind of beer you think I want to try, I'd love to hear from you. I'm always looking for good beers to try, to review on this show, to talk about. So any suggestions from my community, you guys out there, I would really appreciate it. And um, if you tried these, let me know what you think. Let's try the Trader Jose Dark. Ooh, all right, okay. All right, first initial sip, definitely a stronger ale, okay? Even though it's 3%, you feel it in the taste, okay? It kind of brings back the taste of like a Boddington's or a Guinness kind of flavor. If you're familiar with that, like an English ale or a Bass ale, really tasty. Um, like I said, it's got kind of a grape juice flavor to it. Not like you're drinking like a sucking down a thing of Welch's, but just a little hint of that like grape juice kind of concentrate that when you taste it, um, add it with that carbonation of the beer is a nice taste. So really good stuff right here with the, with the Trader Jose's L. All right, so I see some people are hopping on. Hi, guys. I'd just like to say thanks a lot for hopping on if you guys are live. If you want to say what's up. Let me know who you are. I'll shout you out right now. I appreciate you spending your Sunday afternoon or just part of it. Just hopping on and saying hello um, to me, Danny Soleil, and his weekly beer and video review show. Now, here's the bomb I want to drop on you guys. Here's the thing. Now, if you're familiar with me and you know anything about it, um, you know my channel is called Travel Man Dan. And then I have three different shows. I have the Travel Man Dan weekly show. I have the food. Friday show and I have this review show this weekly beer and video review show with travel man Dan all right so through kind of talking to some strategies and you know talking it over with the team and and basically analyzing everything moving forward I will be changing the name of the channel okay the new channel name will be the Danny Soleil channel that's me <laughs> all right all right there's a lot of reasons for it um I'm not going to get into each and every one of them, but it basically comes down to I want to go ahead and continue branding me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Niha, you should join Goren. Oh, she's here. Ah, how da? Niha. And, um, you know, so if you don't know, I speak a little Chinese. So if you see me, Niha, <laughs> Niha. Ah, hello. And um, so, yeah. But uh, yeah, so back to what I was saying. I'm gonna go ahead and start calling my channel the Danny Soleil channel because it just makes more sense for me to go ahead and market myself as an actor, as a celebrity, as a personality. Not that I'm famous or anything, just, you know, moving forward. All right, let's be honest here. <laughs> you know, I'm just a guy out here making videos, right? So, um, but you will not be missing out on the Travel Man Dan show because the Travel Man Dan show will still be every week. And then I will hop into that subsidiary, that entity. So it'll be the Danny Soleil channel with the Travel Man Dan show, with the Food Friday show, with the weekly beer and video review show. So the shows are still going to stay the same. The best way to explain this is kind of like this, right? Okay, YouTube is the network. Okay, the Danny Soleil channel is the channel. The shows are Travel Man Dan, Food Friday, and Weekly Beer and Video Review Show. So nothing's changing. I'm still keeping the moniker. I love Travel Man Dan. I absolutely love it. But just moving forward, it makes better sense for me as an entertainer, as a person that's um, marketing my brand, not only as an actor, as a host or whatever, is to go ahead and use my name as the channel name and then down and below create these different shows. Because... Even coming up maybe this year, I'm going to develop a couple more shows that I can put out there. And I want to, you know, it doesn't make sense. Like, why does Travel Man Dan also have a food show? And why does he have this weekly beer show? And why does he have an acting show? And all these kinds of things. But under the, the, the name of the Danny Slay channel, you can have all the shows you want. That's my network, right? So uh, hopefully that clears it up. You heard it first. That will be changing sometime later this week. I'm um, working on the channel art right now. 
once again, nothing is changing for Travel Man Dan. I'm just changing the, the, the channel name to Danny Soleil. I hope that you would encourage people to continue to watch me, to go ahead and support me, to pass along. Like I said earlier in this live stream, the best thing you can do is just share one of my videos. You know, you can. I post them on my Facebook page. I post them on uh, YouTube. I post them on um, um, Instagram. Anything you can do, especially through YouTube, is take that video and just share it. So I hope that you continue to do it once it changes to the Danny Soleil show and, or Danny Soleil channel. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's get back to this Trader Jose's. Okay, even though these are, well, they're not the strongest beers. This one's a 5.3. The other one's a 5 pointer. Takes us six points to get, you know, to be a strong beer. They're still delicious, and you can still feel a little buzz going on. I normally drink a few beers in an hour, and uh, this show is a lot of fun because I'm able to review it. Sometimes when I have these IPAs that are like 9%, 8%, you know, by the end of the video, you're like slurring. Lots of fun, good stuff. Ah, all right. Not bad at all. Not bad. All right, Trader Jose's. It's got that malty taste to it, okay? So a lot of sweetness to it. The sweet, malty, grapey flavor is uh, is what I'm coming away with. And, uh, yeah, it's enjoyable. Uh, how, many can you, how many can you drink of these? I'm not really sure. Uh, they're definitely a little thicker and a little heavier than the last drink that I had, but still just as delicious. Um, and uh, it's still cheap, too, only... Five ninety nine a six pack, so about a buck a bottle, so that's pretty cool. Oh, and one of the cool things about Trader Joe's is you can buy. What do you drink? I am drinking. This one is called Trader Jose's. Okay, so those of you guys that are hopping on there, we're drinking Trader Jose's. All right, well, this is the what we had before. We are drinking the dark version. Okay, this is like uh, a celebrity. This is kind of like a celebratory kind of ode to the owner who just passed away who created trader joe so really good lighter easier beer yeah it's beer <laughs> how you doing uh grr chen just a uh, pijo yeah 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 me too <laughs> all right very good very good well you're gonna love this show because we do it every sunday it's live, I review two, sh two beers, and we talk about a lot of cool stuff. Um, now, the next little segment that I want to get into is, well, I like to call this segment, it's a new thing. It's something that I want to try. It's something that should be fun. It should be interesting. It could bring uh, uh, some cool ideas and, and, and leave you with some information. Oh, you're in New York City. Cool. NYC. I'm from the western part. I'm from Buffalo. That's very cool. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Ni hao. Okay, so this, this, this section of the video, this section of this show is called This Day in History, okay? So This Day in History is exactly what it says. And uh, I'm going to give you guys a couple of dates. I'm going to give you some information that happened on those dates on this day, March 1st. So the first one being in 19, oh, I'm sorry, in 1692, March 1st. The Salem witch trials were started, okay? They began, okay? Four women were brought to uh, justice or they were brought to in front of the, um, in the community of Salem, Virginia or Salem, Massachusetts and then the trials of the Salem witch uh, began, all right? So if you don't know anything about witch hunting, if you want to check it out, today was the day and uh, 1692, March 1st. All right. In 1803, March 1st, Ohio became the 17th state. Woohoo! All right, Ohio. So that was in 1803. Um, Ohio, if you're from Ohio, give me a shout. Put a comment down below. I got some friends from Ohio. Um, really great place. I'm still waiting for my one friend to bring me back to the Buckeyes. Damn. All right, well, it's delicious. It's good stuff. A Buckeye is basically a, a, like... Uh, in Ohio, it's a it's a peanut butter and chocolate little delicious thing. But hey, congratulations, Ohio! It's uh it's kind of your birthday. Okay, so then also in 1867, Nebraska became the 37th state on March 1st. Woohoo! All right, so 37th state, Nebraska joined us, and 
That was uh, in 1837. All right, the next one, um, 1932. Okay, Charles Lindenberg and his wife Annie had their, their child uh, uh, kidnapped. So if you guys are familiar with this, um, it's kind of it's a very sad part of American history, but it was a very famous case, much like you would see the OJ case, or I'm trying to think of another case that was very uh, prominent. And, and Charles and Annie Lindbergh, they were uh, very uh, well known people back in the day. And 1932, their child was kidnapped, and uh, it was a big. And you know that's 1932. Unfortunately, things have gotten a lot of worse. And people do it all the time. And, well, you know, just thought I would share that with you if you guys are history buffs. So let's move on to the next one. The next one will be 1961. 1961, March 1st, is a special day because the United States Peace Corps was created by John F. Kennedy. Woohoo! And uh, I wasn't um, a longtime member of the Peace Corps, but I did sign on and I went to Zambia, Africa in the 2000. So, um, yeah, I have some experience with the Peace Corps. It actually changed a lot of my world, actually. That time that I was in Africa, although it wasn't a very long time, I signed up for two years, but I got injured and had to come home. But I'll tell you what, just the few months that I spent over there living in Africa, living in a hut, um, no running water, no electricity, you know, these are things that uh, we, we take for granted. Man, it changed my life. And, uh, you know, I just remember being in, in the fields of Africa and, like, knowing I was going to go home and, like, what the hell am I going to do with my life? And when I got home, I thought it over and, um, you know, I just basically said, and, uh, you know, these poor people, they, uh, they're at least, you know, they're very happy over there and they have very minimal things. And I was able to see it. I was able to experience it. I have that perspective. You know, I lived in the mud hut, like I said, no running water, no electricity. But, uh, you know, the thing that I understood was, at least in the United States, I had the opportunity to kind of further myself, whatever I wanted to do. So then I got inspired and I moved to Hollywood. And that's when I just said, you know what, if it takes me 20 years, it takes me 20 years. Um, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to be an entertainer. I want to be an actor. I want to be a host. Uh, you know, and when I look at, when I think back to those days in Africa and, and think back to the Peace Corps days, it's like, man, they, they, some of those people, things don't really change. It could be the same little jungle land. And here I am, I have this opportunity. So I very rarely ever feel sorry for myself. And I'm always able to be optimistic about the situation because of the perspective that I once saw in other countries. And not just Africa, I'm talking about all over the world, you know, and I see this and it's like, Danny, you have an opportunity. You have it. You're here in Los Angeles. You can still pursue it if it takes long. Uh, uh, thank you so much. My next trip to China, I don't know. Unfortunately, I had to just turn down a TV show. Uh, like, um, and It was shooting in Malaysia, and so I wasn't able to go back. I, I don't know if you've seen Dao Mu Bi Ji or let's see, another one, Tian Jiang Shong Shi. It's a, it's a Chinese movie, but um, you can check those out. I'll keep you posted next time I go back. As soon as this coronavirus uh, kicks in and is cured, definitely going to go back. I love China. I love the Chinese people. They'll always be dear to my heart. You know what I mean? I always go back there and make videos. Just absolutely love it there. Thank um, you. Um, but yeah, so that's that was the opportunity that I needed. So thank you, John F. Kennedy, in 1961 for creating the Peace Corps, which inspired me to be an actor. A lot of people don't know that, but uh, I guess they do now if you watch this <laughs> this video. Let's go ahead. Um, oh, sure. Uh, no, I studied uh, in I studied ed education, f uh, physical education, like PE, exercise science. But I did my master's degree in China. I studied kung fu for cinema, wushu. Um, so if, uh, I studied at Shanghai uh, Tiyu Guan. It's a sports university. I did my master's degree there. And it was a lot of fun. It was great. I studied friggin' you know, kung fu for cinema. Where are you going to get that degree? And, um, but the thing is, is I was rarely in class because I was working a lot as an actor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of Chinese friends. I spent almost six and a half years there. So 
There's a lot of good times, good times. But uh, yeah, let's get back into this Trader Joe's. I'm going to finish up this week in history, or this day in history, and then I want to go on to what are you reading, what are you watching. Ah, yeah, okay. Really good. Dark. You know, what I would suggest trying this one is like, if you like a little darker beer, but maybe the IPA is just really too strong for you, like the taste and like, you know, this one's more of a subtle kind of ale and it's it's got some really crazy flavors going on. And now I'm getting the taste of like a nutty kind of ale. Um, so a lot of different flavor changing going on. Um, really nice uh, Trader Jose Dark. So got to drink a little slower, right? Okay, the other one you could whack down and probably a slug or two. So, um, so also let's talk about this. Uh, in 1941, the FM radio on March 1st was introduced in the city of Nashville, Tennessee. Well, all my exes live. You know that song about Tennessee. All right. <laughs> all right, we're getting a little wacky here. Um, you didn't know I'd do a little country singing, did you? Well, anyway. That was introduced in 1941, the FM radio on March 1st in Nashville, Tennessee. And if you don't know, now you know, I guess they say, or you see Dana White's been doing those little segments. That's kind of cool. Gets people uh, pumped up about the fight. And uh, he always ends it with, if you don't know, then now you know. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much what happened. Uh, I always try to bring in that cool new segment. Now let's go back to an old segment that I like to do, one that we've been doing and recording uh, for each week. It's called, What Are You Reading? What Are You Watching? Um, I'm a big uh, advocate of reading because as an actor, I think it's just a skill that it's essential for you. I think it's, um, it's, it doesn't, you don't need an agent. You don't need an agent. You don't, you don't, you don't need things to call you back. You just gotta go and read. And through that, you can become better as an actor. So one of the things that I want to talk about for reading is what are you reading? What are you watching? And this week I am reading, ba -ba 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 -ba. ladies and gentlemen, all this type. Now I got to tell you guys, I'm not a very political person at all. So, you know, whatever your political view, I can like, that's the whole thing. You can vote or you can not vote. You can like who you want. You can like that person or this person. That's the whole thing about democracy. I, you know, who am I to say, you know, I, 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 just seen a lot of hatred going around this country and um you know it, it's kind of foolishness because we're built on a country of democracy for for allowing you to choose who you want so i just wanted to state that i'm not a very political person so you know you know save it okay save it because I, I i really truly don't care what your opinion is um, I value that you have an opinion, but it's not going to make me waver or argue or like or, you know, dislike you. But it's always good to know what you're talking about or what you're exploring or what the understanding is, you know. So that's why that, this week I am reading the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> All right. That's right. So, okay. This is really cool. It is uh, goes through the Declaration of Independence. It's got all the four uh, founders of our, our country. It talks about the preserving uh, principles, the guardian virtue and freedom. Uh, it goes through all the different articles, the amendments. It's just a little pocket size, but you know, a lot of people don't even know what they're fussing and argue about in some in, in some circumstances. And you know, I like to just look from the outside and be able to you know basically at least be knowledgeable to what's going on and uh well i think it just starts right here so this is what i'm reading i'm reading the constitution of the united states i'm not a lawyer i'm not a politician i just think it's kind of cool to understand uh the country that you live in and the laws and the bylaws and all that good stuff so let me know down in the comments below what you're reading i'd love to hear from you and um now let's get to the part of what are you watching and um well if you don't know me uh, I will tell you, I really love Chinese movies, not only because I've acted in a lot of them, um, but I like special certain types of ones called the wuxia films. And they're like, uh, the, you know, the House of the Flying Dagger and Hero. And it's this old, you know, where the Chinese people are flying through and it's like, there's always this love story and this really elaborate story and the, the cinematography is beautiful. Um, the costumes are elaborate, gorgeous, you know, just really cool. The wushu, the kung fu is just amazing. So these are the types of movies I like to really get into and watch. And that's what I'm watching. I'm watching uh, Flying.
Shining Swords of the Dragon Gate and is a Jet Li movie. <clears throat> it didn't do as well as the ones I just mentioned, like uh, House of the Flying Daggers and Hero, but, uh, but still interesting. It somehow evaded me, I didn't see it, but that's what I'm watching. It, it takes place in like ancient China, and it's just really interesting. Um, like I said, the cinematography and the costume, if anything, if the story sucks, the acting is terrible, it's just kind of like all really fun to watch um, these Chinese movies. And these are the things that inspired me to move to China and to try to work with Jackie Chan and to be inspired to just go to China. And I met so many great people. I had some great experiences. So I always try to watch a lot of Chinese movies. And if you haven't seen that one, that one's pretty cool and interesting. And you'll have to check it out. Now, let's go back into, uh, well, let's get back into the Trader Jose's Dark. I'm going to slug this down. I'm going to give it a score. I'm going to leave you with the quote of the week, and then we're going to skedaddle, and I'm going to get going. So here we go. A little bit longer to pull. All right. As I gather my senses, I gather my beer expertise. I gather my knowledge of drinking beer. I, I like Chinese movies. There's a certain style of Chinese movies that I don't like. Um, I like all the ones I'm in. <laughs> um, so, hey, Trader Jose, not bad. Dark, like I said, lots of different flavors. I taste like a grape, kind of multi, nutty, hoppy taste, but not overpowering like your IPAs would be. Very delicious. It's a little strong. Um, not too like where you you know can't drink like you can probably get down four of them before you start feeling it um, I, I feel like this if I poured it in a glass it would be more of an amber and um, the reason I don't pour it in the glass I like to taste it just out of the bottle just like I normally would normally I wouldn't take a bottle of beer and put it into a glass and then drink it I only kind of drink pints when I'm at bars or restaurants and things like that so I like to do it just as is just to see what it tastes like but I think if I was Look at the flavor, at the color of the beer. I think it will be more, more of a rich flavor, which can be a hit or miss. But overall, a good beer. Trainer Jose's, you're going to get a solid 7.0. 7, a score of a 7, right? Okay, not bad. So once again, to bring it in so we can go ahead and close this show out, we got Trader Jose, okay, and we got Trader Jose Dark. We gave this one a 7.5, okay, we gave this one a 7, all right? Very delicious, really cheap. You can get them at Trader Joe's. Rest in peace, the owner, Joe, and, uh, well, not bad, delicious. I definitely suggest you try it out for yourselves. And that's what's going to bring us to today's last segment and that is the quote of the week i said suggest it for yourselves and that's kind of what we're talking about today's quote of the week is goes like this be yourself everyone else is taken <laughs> and it's by oscar wilde and it is an amazing quote and it's just if you think about it like be yourself everyone else is taken so many people out here are just trying to be what other people are and well, you listen, you should admire people. You should have mentors in fields and things like this that you want to also be successful. But don't ever try to be anybody but yourself because yourself is yours. And all those other people, don't, they're already taken. Those people are themselves. So when you try to add it all up, you'll never actually be fully satisfied. And what you're doing is you're chasing these false tenses of what you think you should be, what you think you ought to be, and what you're trying to accomplish is actually being somebody else, and you'll never, ever be able to do that. The only thing you'll ever, ever be able to do that's yourself is yourself. And that is so important. And uh, just remember that. I don't know, you, you know, you can reflect on it like I do, or throughout the day, you just kind of, you know, you think about it and you say, you know what, that is right. I am myself. I'm my own person. And, and you know, everybody else is taken. And people are going to have different values. They're going to have different morals. They're going to have different ideas of what's important to them. And as long as you're not harming people, okay, like, uh, belligerently hurting people physically or mentally and emotionally and hurt, hurting them, you know, go with your ideas. Go and be, be somebody that is... Uh, you know, 
uh, an uncharted explorer and whatever that means to you. Okay, be yourself. And if people don't understand it, screw them. It's not, a, it's not for them to understand. They have themselves to worry about. For them to worry too much about you, it means that they're not actually invested in themselves and that they can't be. Maybe they have to be, well, understand that principle too, that be yourself because everybody else is taken. It's so important. It's hard to do right now because there's so much influence with all this junk on social media that like tells you what to be. And um, the only thing you can be is yourself. And that's because everybody else is taken. <laughs> Great quote. I love it. Think about it. Guys, that's going to wrap it up today. We almost went an hour, but that's how it goes. I got to say thank you so much. If you guys have joined in, if you gave me a like, if you hit that mash button, if you put a comment down below, super appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing and you haven't already, go ahead and hit that sub button, ring the bell, give me a like. Uh, just kind of, if you could help support my channel, I'd appreciate that. If you hang in here and you watched it, thank you so much. It means the world to me. You guys are awesome. Let me know what kind of beers you want to see me try next. We'll be back here next Sunday. On, or if you want to check out this upcoming week's video, is um, it's going to be a Food Friday. I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's probably going to be something like the Kentucky Fried Chicken Donut Sandwich. Um, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. But stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. 谢谢你,加油,中国. <laughs> and uh, you have a great day. I'm Travel Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.